All right, Grog Shed, I wasn't really sure um, what game you wanted me to um, uh, show you, so I said, you know what, I'll just do a quick video or kind of thing. And anyways, and then on the side note, I was thinking, um, oh my gosh, I wonder if he's doing like a little um, sneaky little uh, uh, remark in the sense that, remember, we're supposed to trade. I'm supposed to give you the, the Desert Fox Deluxe game, and you're supposed to get me... Um, what is it, Serbine, Mustarbine, or whatever, uh, the GMT game. And I was like, well, maybe he's just doing that. But anyways, I was like, oh, I'll just do a quick one here again. I've, I've done one before, but well, why not? Um, and uh, I guess you would call it somewhat thematic. It's still an ongoing process of putting some things in. Like a lot of, uh, I didn't want to put in put in any more uh, games on the wall. Uh, I wanted to keep as much white space as possible, but I'm like, yeah, screw it. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, you'll see what happens. What I mean by ongoing, I'll try to. Yeah, you know, I can do this. I keep forgetting that I can adjust the. There we go. So I can see what the camera can see, kind of thing. So yeah, this is I would call my bottom shelf. It's more like the non, um, you know, like a game I'd pull out with just anybody, kind of stuff or whatever. If not, like not going. Oh, I don't want to play a war, like a war, like I want to play the Battle of Lord knows what's kind of thing. Uh, that type of thing. Um, but totally, I didn't like. I said, still to this day, it's still freaking me out that there was an there's an actual board game of Patoli that could have been purchased back in the day. Um, yeah, you know, I like I made it up my own. I didn't know you could actually purchase one. I was just like, whoa. Uh, and then I've got. I'm sorry, I'll pan back here. Um, there we've got that. Um, yeah, you know, I've got the these guys. I like Ancients actually. That's a nice one. Space Empires. That was the very first game. You know, we're not not except uh, well, we'll go up to the other shelf. But this is the first game I was thinking I was actually going to start playing uh, two years ago. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, it would have been two years ago because I took my first two months off or whatever. I went nuts. It was the first time I'd ever done something like that for a lot like during the pandemic. While they had to give me a lot of uh, time off, I had to work um, during the pan. Like, I didn't get much uh, time off, kind of thing at that time anyway so there we go and then we go into this uh shelf games i have not played but you know i wanted to pick up kind of thing at the time is empires of the middle ages it's the the newer version i don't know if it's any this is the print and play thing i got of i think i've done an unboxing or a revealing of uh, the one i did when i was um talking about custom game bits and whatnot and what a great job i think he did of uh uh, the Holland Spiele game uh, for Horse and Musket, Dawn of an Era, which I absolutely, I really enjoy. Um, I still have to print out the new uh, the new counters and whatnot, but uh, that's that. The Battle of uh, Blenheim, uh, from, uh, or Blenheim um, from Legion War Games, I picked that up ages ago based on a recommendation watching um, uh, the Player's Aid um, way back when, when I was starting to get into stuff, and then, uh, Charlemagne, I found out about them, and the Table Battles is kind of like a version after for me, anyways, of Pocket Battles, which I absolutely adore, um, I think I've mentioned that before, you know, I really, really like, uh, Pocket Battles, uh, and the third box is at work, I always keep a, I'm keeping a box uh, at work at all times, just, and I just rotate them, just on the off chance, you never know, that's what I'm looking at, and then I've got the Waterloo Solitaire, which I have not played yet, and all these games I've also not played at, I've just stared at. Um, but uh, I, you can kind of see the thematics, whatever. Uh, Siege of Leningrad, um, one of the Minden games uh, thing. I've put counters and buttons on the pages. That's about as close as I've come to it. The, Stalin, the Stalingrad 42 game, which was supposedly going to be, uh, I had it on the table downstairs, um, and it was going to be uh, what Der Volkrieg turned into for me. Uh, I just ran into a brick wall very quickly with the rules. But when I saw Dad versus Son doing Stalingrad 42, and I, this was a few months after I'd seen him do it, uh, and I wanted to get a monster game itch uh, scratched kind of thing, and I thought, well, maybe this is the best way for me to kind of do it without getting too whatever. But it was just too much. Uh, it was I just couldn't understand at the very beginning. I was just like, well, I'm putting this away. It, it looked beautiful. It still looks beautiful. Uh, the Dad vs. Son uh, videos for that are just fantastic on multiple levels. That's all I got to say. Um, it was fantastic. Really, really good stuff to watch. And some more stuff uh, I would love to. I really would. Uh, yeah, I do want to play the Mighty Endeavor for sure. Intrigued by Cobra. I've played, never played D-Day Quad to its conclusion. I've played uh, abortive games as in other things have happened. I know there's a bazillion problems with the rule. I just, something about it. I, it's just a nice marriage for me of whatever. I like the, even with the, uh, the slippery components and the whole nine yards. Love it. 
uh, yeah, and that's another one I probably will never play and it'll remain there or just get sent, you know, to someone else. So here's the games. I don't know what you were talking about, Grog. Shed, so uh, there you go, uh, go. but um, yeah, and the supply lines of the American Revolution, actually, that's something I need to play for myself for the minigame very, very soon. There's no effing around, uh, that's for sure. Uh, and then we'll go on over to here. Somewhat thematic, not really. Like I said, I've you know I've only got so many shelves and whatever, but I'm doing my uh, what I can. Yeah, I absolutely adore um, Field uh, Commander and Napoleon. Great game. Oh my gosh, what a game! I got purchased that years ago, and I uh, do not regret a single penny for that. Haven't played Blood before. Richmond do not have the entire series. Would love to get the entire series. Uh, played a little bit of U.S. Civil War with uh, Rob. I hope. We do play it again because it was it was fun. Uh, the little tiny bit we did play, Clash of Giants Civil War. Uh, would like to try it because I need to. Uh, well, I watched uh, Cataclysm now do um, a thing on it, and um, I really, I really, I want to find out more about the command and control again. I want to play it and see it, kind of thing. And these things I've got. Some, these are just some Legion War. No, those are the Revolution games. Um, these guys and I guess I can now put the them on the uh, shelves that's what I'm starting to do with some of all these extras that I have on the shelf but uh, hold on so, and World War one I, I have I didn't play it to its conclusion but it was uh, one of the very first games I played uh, two years ago when I started up and uh, and um, not whatever and I watched uh, darn it um, um, Stephen Dolges uh, do a really really good job on that an extended playthrough videos and all that uh, whatnot. So there's another, there's uh, I guess my holy grail game of something I would like to play at some point. I really want to play that someday. Um, like that's, yeah, that's just so, like, oof. that's like retirement kind of thing. I just don't want any, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, just uh, I've been also on a Tannenberg kick at one point. I was trying to get every freaking, I think I may have actually every, uh, a uh, game where the Battle of Tannenberg is in at some point. So I'm going to go on to my little whatever's here. So you can see that. I'm sorry if there's glare. Yep, uh, I have not played Rogers Rangers. I played Campaigns of Montrose. I enjoyed it. I have not played Vikings. I watched uh, Centurion's Review talk about it. I've not played Leto Vorbeck. I'd like to. Uh, Southfield, there's another one I want to play. Uh, Sticks and Stones, I've been trying to adapt to miniatures games so I could do uh, for can games. Uh, no Retreat, I picked that up actually at can games ages ago and just have never played it. And then we'll go off into my... Uh, oh yeah, you want to see this? Still there, still sitting there. It's only been one turn that's completed, but it's still sitting there. Good Lord. Uh, it's just that uh, Rob and I have just not been uh, connecting the dots. It's been one thing after the other and it's just the way it goes. And uh, yeah, this thing, I cannot begin, I'm so ultra, actually I have the new rule systems for all three. Now I, I should try, I want to uh, play uh, the Mysterian Lakes one uh, scenario. It's a nice, very, very tiny scenario. Um, you know, I mean, maybe not so good if you're the Russian player and you're, and you're a very offensive minded player, because you're like, <laughs> I can have a lot of fun that way. But uh, yeah, I like it. It's, uh, it's quite a, yeah, I really enjoy that game. This is mostly my CSL stuff. Well, there, as you can see, there was over some over there, the uh, the, uh, the operation, uh, the World War II demos ones he has and whatnot. And some more like, so now I can extend and you'll see the ones I'm about to extend, but I'm gonna go through all these things. I haven't even played any of these. But you'll see who I've got. Hold on, I'm gonna move my thing so I can see what you guys can see. I keep forgetting about this. So, yeah, I'm right up against the table, so. Yes, that is a game I saw uh, Justicar play, uh, Warsaw 1920, and it looks so intriguing. Ironically, there's a Kerry Anderson game that uh, um, Manry Mike did a compare and contrast. Not that game, but he did a compare and contrast. Uh, he was doing the Clavius uh, one there. But, uh, some more Tannenberg stuff, of course. And uh, so you can see I've got a lot of blank space here. Hold on. Gosh, all my neighbor really need to learn how to use these bloody camcorder thingamajigs. So, uh, I'm just doing my thing. It was a little slow. There's the ta uh, Spence and Gable Tannenberg ones. Ooh, these inflatable dice, sorry. This was for my one year party. <laughs> bloody hell, I'm so freaking delusional. Um, 
there's my Tannenberg. And like I said, at the time when I was buying, like a lunatic, buying all things, you know, oh, you're into them, just like everybody else. You're into it, you buy everything. Um, um, well, I was like, holy Lord, Lifton, these things are pretty darn affordable. And I'm sorry, but they're great looking pictures uh, for the most part, especially the World War One ones. Look at that. I mean, come on, man. That's just lovely. I wonder if that's that Canadian. No, I don't think so, because he did mostly horse stuff. So I gotta start. Uh, I'd like to find out who did that one though. Um, so there we go. Uh, yeah, I think I've. Uh, no, I don't have every single World War One folio uh, by Decision Games because I don't have the uh, Falklands and the Coronel Islands or something like that. I don't have that one. But I'm gonna have uh, uh, Los uh, downstairs. Um, the big, uh, the big push. You know, pan out again. Sorry. These guys. Um, yeah, so I've got to uh, mark out all the new hooks along these walls. I've got the hooks uh, in another room. I'll show you in a second here, and they'll, they'll go up, and then they're, all these games are going to go on the walls, basically. Oh, I think Zoe's popping over on Saturday, so I think we can play uh, Old Newton, or she can help me out here. So I think I can. I'm going to pop these on. Um, on on the walls upstairs here. See if this will help with the glare. So yeah, I can pop these guys on. I hope. I think most of you guys have seen these before. So a lot of these are recent acquisitions uh, from Can Games. When I was like, oh my Jesus! And they kept saying, the vendors like, hey, I found another World War One thing. I'm like, yeah. That's nuts. What are you? Oh, shoot. Well, hold on. Red Typhoon. Okay. But what do I have him? Oh, yeah, because we were doing a live stream, I guess, and it was, uh, um, or maybe, did you fall down and I had to redo your hook? I think that's probably it. Yeah, it was, uh, these dollar store sticky things suck on my tit, so I have to uh, use um, crazy glue. Hold on here. But all, many of them were affixed before I found that out. So now it's like these random days where you hear kaboom. <laughs> There's another one I've got to do. Hold on. Oh, Lord have mercy. So yeah, this used to be in the room and now it's going to be removed. And Zoe's right. She was like, it sucks there. I keep bumping into it. So I'm like, okay, it's gone. And these are t-shirts that um, I've been trying out the different feel from. Oh, this one is so soft. But the other thing is, I'm not too sure about what people like for designs. So this one's a weird, weirdish front, I guess, but my God, it's soft. And I guess, are these the normal, the normal look? Is that that? I don't know. But I've got a few to do, and um, I've like, now I can do, do them kind of thing. Um, I'll quickly show you the other room since, uh, Excuse me, I also have to work on it, figure, uh, fix this up a little bit more, but, uh, so that's it. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> considering all you wanted to see, Grog Shed was the, um, uh, the game to my, uh, the game to the, uh, the Guilford or Guiford, I can't, uh, Guifar or whatever, um, Sar Saratoga and Brandywine, so I guess maybe it was the America for War. Uh, game you wanted to see, I'm not really sure, but uh, there you go. Okay, hope you're having a great time, and I better hit this button. See ya.